So let's go back to 1996. Can you remember the era? Can you remember how strong Italian football was and Juventus in particular? Italian football were very strong in 1996 era. Um, Juventus was the best side in, in Italy. Um, and um, I think it was a side full of confidence. Uh, we thought that uh, being the best in Italy meant uh, pretty much being the best in Europe. Um, Italian football was that good at that time. Um, and um, uh, Juventus had not won the Champions League for uh, you know, 12 years and the last time was in ISL. So it was a very dramatic final. And, um, and we wanted to win it because we wanted, without being cheesy, we wanted to give uh, Juventus fans finally a, a, a cup, a Champions Cup worth celebrating for. A very good memories and cancel everything that um, so dramatically had happened back uh, at the ISL 12 years before. Give us some of the names of your teammates from that era. Uh, the team was very strong, was very athletic. We were probably the most athletic, uh, the fittest uh, side in Italy and probably even in Europe. Um, we had a fantastic uh, goalkeeper in, uh, in Peruzzi, probably not as good as Buffon, but a great guy, a great goalkeeper. Um, somebody that you want to go to war with because you know had that kind of attitude. And then a very strong back four with Vierko Hood, uh, Ciro Ferrara, both um, with many presences in the national team. Um, in the midfield we had Didier Deschamps, uh, who was now managing uh, France, obviously. Uh, Paolo Sosa, uh, who was managing Basel. And Antonio Conte was obviously managing it. And so we had, very, we had a very strong uh, midfield. And up front, we played in a very unique way with three strikers um, uh, myself, Del Piero, and Ramanelli. And um, we were sort of so unselfish in the way we were playing the game. And uh, we were sort of running for the team, scoring goals. Uh, um, we were the first defenders when we lost the ball. And um, so we had a very unique style uh, and we were a team full of confidence. And of course, the icing, the icing on the cake was the manager, Marcello Lippi, an absolute messiah for myself and for the rest of the team. Um, so he was really the leader of a group of leaders. Why was he so special? It was special because he had um, simple but very effective um, tactical uh, principles. He was very good at communicating them. Uh, and um, it was fantastic in giving us confidence. Um, being with Marcello made me feel that I was the best striker in the world, and I, I think, I'm sure that he felt the same for my teammates. Um, so I think that giving confidence, being able to manage a group of um, strong personalities were Marcello's best um, qualities. You got to the final. The final is in Rome. Bear in mind you're from Turin. Is that a good or a bad thing? The final was in Rome and it was a very good thing because we knew that we had um, the stadium 75% full of Juventus fans. Um, it was a little bit more pressure than when you play in neutral ground because you know you're playing at home so you've got support but at the same time uh, there's a bit of pressure because you're the favourite obviously. And, um, and for me that match uh, was quite similar to the match I played with Sampdoria at Wembley four years before and you know against Barcelona in the final of the, Champions, uh, the Champions Cup because I knew that that was going to be my final game with Juventus, exactly the same thing I had when I played with Sampdoria and then I left to go to Juventus, I knew I was going to come to Chelsea. Um, so um, probably the last chance for me to play in the Champions League final, a game, final game with my club in Rome, <laughs> I was desperate to win, so I put a lot of pressure on my shoulders. So it was by far the most complicated game for me to prepare mentally before the kickoff. Yeah, what was the build-up like in those days? Obviously, it's massive now. Was it still huge? It was a big build-up. Uh, at least in Italy, it was. We were playing in Rome. Um, we were back in the final after so many years with a chance to to win it. So we went to uh, a place, a training camp, a very secluded training ground uh, in Rome four or five days before the final and we spent the last four days in, in Rome just preparing, uh, trying to concentrate, uh, working out a few, a few tactical um, things that we wanted to then put on the pitch and, 
and um, it was the usual, usual preparation for an Italian team. Away from all the troubles, away from all the distractions, focus on the game and get ready. Now your opponents were Ajax, Van Gaal was their relatively young manager and this was a time, wasn't it, where a, a club like Ajax could keep their best players and wow, did they have some big names. Ajax, were, they were the oldest and they had a very good manager in Van Gaal. They were a team full of confidence. They, we knew the way they wanted to play the game. They wanted to be in possession of the ball and dictate the tempo. And uh, they were playing with two very offensive wings and uh, a striker in Littner Manning that would drop, uh, almost playing as a midfielder. Uh, they wanted to build the game, the play from the back. Uh, man on man marking in midfield, so a very sort of uh, a very unique side to play against. Uh, um, but we knew we had a chance. Um, we knew that they were strong, and we respected them. But we knew we had a chance. And you got off to a great start, didn't you? Someone who we came to know in the Premier League, Ravanelli, scoring your early goal. Yes, we we went uh, one up, uh, sort of uh, in within 20-25 minutes, uh, um, deservedly. Uh, it was a sort of a strange goal by Ramanelli from, you know, there was like a misunderstanding between the goalkeeper, uh, Van der Sar, and one of the defenders. But Ramanelli was very, very clever in, in getting the ball and scoring from a very, very tight angle. And then he started running and it, it, we, we couldn't catch him. He was so happy and he ran from one side of the pitch to the other side of the pitch, celebrating. And then he was tired after that, <laughs> and he got substituted. <laughs> and uh, no, it was a very good start, it, it, the, the perfect start, basically, um, yes. And, and has he become known for that, for that goal? Has that almost defined his career? I think Ravanelli has done many, many things in his career. Obviously, that is probably the pinnacle of his career, because when you play and score in the Champions League final, uh, I think it's the only Champions League final he played, and it's the last Champions League final that Juventus um, as one, so yes, Ramanelli has become immortal after scoring that goal. <laughs> Tell us about the equaliser. Uh, the equaliser, I think it was a gift uh, from us um, because um, there was a mm, free kick from outside the box. We didn't deal with the ball very well. Um, there was a misunderstanding between Peruzzi and Vierkwood and Ferrara, and then I think the ball dropped uh, where Lee Manning was and he, and he put it in the back of the net. 1-1, um, unexpectedly, but uh, it made us think. It made us realise that the final was not won at all. It was just the beginning. How nervous were you about the penalty shootout? I was very nervous when we, get to, when we got to the penalty shootout because um, I had taken two penalties in Rome in the same stadium in the, last, in the previous six years. Uh, one time in, in the World Cup against the United States and I hit the post. And two years later, I took a penalty against AC Rome and I broke my foot and I was out for about 120 days. So I didn't, I didn't have good feelings. And when Marcello came to speak to me as the, as the captain, um, he said to me, Luca, uh, Luca, would you like to you know, take it? And I said, look, I'm there if you need me, but <laughs> if, you find, if you have another five crazy guys that are very willing to take it, take the penalties, then I'll, uh, you know, I'll sit out. And he said, OK, let me, let me think about it. And you might have to be the sixth one uh, if you know, we're still level after five penalties. And I said, OK. And I remember Marcello saying that uh, in that, that night, as well as um, when, when he managed Italy in Berlin for 2006 World Cup final, he knew um, we were going to win because everybody seemed to want to take the penalty. There was nobody hiding, nobody running away, pretending to have cramps or, or, or feeling tired. So he felt, when I looked around and I saw players that wanted to take a penalty in such an important and difficult time, I knew we were going to win, and we did. And what was the feeling like when you did win? Well, it was amazing. Um, I think because I felt I finally won something that um, it was so close four years before and sort of uh, um, because of me missing a few goal opportunities with Sampdoria. So finally I could get hold of that cup uh, and um, it was basically a defining moment of my career. Um, also I think that when you're 31, I was 31 at that time and I felt it was pretty much my last chance because at that time uh, believe me, it was so much more difficult to win the Champions League final because um, 
you needed two years to win it. You need you need to win the championship first, and then following year you had to play uh, Champions Cup and, and try to win it. So it was it was a bigger effort. And also when you're 31, unlike when you're 20, you realize how much how many sacrifices, how difficult um, it is to win something. And then you get very emotional. When you're 20, you're just happy. You don't realize what you've done. <laughs> but at 31, with the pressure on your shoulders, uh, time running away, and, and so many sacrifices, and the injuries and stuff, then I got really emotional, and uh, I nearly fainted on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us afterwards as well, there's some great shots of you in the dressing room, and then getting the plane back. I presume you went back to Turin that night? Did yeah, you? We, we went back to Turin straight after the match. I was sort of, uh, sort of so tired I couldn't really speak or or say too much I just wanted to uh, recharge my batteries because I was flat completely flat and we celebrated the Italian way which is very different from the way the English clubs subsequently taught me to celebrate when you win something so important so we flew back to Turin uh, we went straight to bed and the day after we left to go to Vietnam to play in a, in a, in a sort of, uh, you know, in a tournée, in like an exhibition match. So no celebrations, nothing whatsoever. No dinner, we, we no drinks. Nothing. We flew back from Vietnam and I, 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 I boarded a plane straight to go to London and, and sign for Chelsea Football Club. Wow. Is that a regret now, looking back, that you didn't celebrate at the moment? Absolutely. I think he takes so much effort, so much, so many sacrifices, uh, and it's so painful when you lose that when you win, you do need to celebrate. You owe it to yourself. You needed Dennis Wise in that Juventus team, didn't you? <laughs> Dennis Wise was a master of celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so you left for Chelsea, but but Juve's success continued, didn't it? And some more big names came in. That, that really was a golden period for Juventus. It was a fantastic period for Juventus. Uh, Juventus was a great club um, with great players. I think that we were the ones that, we were the players that basically together with Marcello Lippi, the manager, that sort of uh, built the foundation for a fantastic um, future of the club. And the club got to the final three more times in the um, sort of uh, following six or seven years. So it was the best club in Europe. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to win any of the other three finals, but uh, it was a club that was competing for the top spot in Europe year uh, after year.